I will be honest with you. Up until about a year ago, I wasn't even aware that Lord of the Rings had an MMO. What did he say? I heard conversations of it on and off, but I didn't really pay it any mind. Again, I have to say thank you to the void that is World of Warcraft and League of Legends that ate up most of my available playing time. And that was way too much. Well, after recently watching the most pivotal moment of any young man's development into adulthood, this moment, of course, right here. Legally, I can't show you any more than five seconds or else the YouTube gods come and get me. In my travels to find the greatest MMO, I decided to play this storied game, and I quite literally had the most unexpected journey. So grab a cup of coffee and have a listen to see if Lord of the Rings Online is the greatest MMO that I never played. Also, huge shout out to my sponsors who are assisting me reach my goal of a full-time content creator. I couldn't do it without you wonderful folk. So as I've described, this is my very first step into the world of Lord of the Rings Online. I haven't even played the game or made an account until this past week to truly see what was so great about it. It is highly reviewed, many positive comments and feedback on Steam, so I'm excited to get started. After trying to figure out why I had such a weird windowed display on my screen, it, it seemed like the game was trying to launch in a resolution less than 1080p. I cursed my computer a few minutes, and then here we are. I was able to get it to HD, and now we have the character select screen. The most important part of any MMO experience. With so many choices, it is a bit... Oh, wait, that one has a spear. Here we go. I also would like to appreciate that this one here has nothing but bear. What do you play? Bears. Despite the game coming out in 2007, there are tons of options for character customization. This, I believe, is large in part to the game still receiving updates and players still being drawn in, so I can't imagine that there was this much customization at launch, but it's a nice feature to note. Even down to, like, the eye color and everything else, it's, it's impressive. I'll give it that. I also do appreciate that you have a bit of a class description as well as racial bonuses. However, without any research really into the game and me coming into it blind, I don't know what any of this means. What is fate? What is morale? What the hell is the difference between a hobbit and a river hobbit aside from them being closer to a body of agua? Anyway, I stick with the basic bee that I am and I choose a man warden, mainly because spears really get to the point. <laughs> okay, so getting into the story, I am locked up. This is probably due in large part to the unsustainably certified coffee that I buy, and thankfully Aragon or Strider or this hooded stranger came to my rescue and one shots all these people who were holding me captive. First glance at the UI here, I'm a bit confused. Mousing over some of the enemies causes a very large pop-up window to show the mob that you were hovering over, but it also kind of like blocks me from being able to click anything else. And this is only a mild inconvenience compared to this gambit bar. At first, I am unsure of what this is, but having it directly in the middle of where I'm attacking and striking is somewhat of a pain. Shortly thereafter, I find out that you can move the UI and fix this problem, but it does cause a mild annoyance to start. With my spear and javelin in hand, I run around murdering only what I can assume are prison guards who are just here trying to feed their families and make a living. Oh wait, no, they're bandits. <laughs> the boulder's over his conflicted feelings. We run into a few hobbits and we rescue them, and here we are. All the while I'm attacking, I'm trying to figure out what this gambit bar is doing. I quickly notice that it is very similar, like a combo bar. I use these skills in succession, and I get a new ability, Spear Stab. It's shield bash, and I can, then I can kick enemies. It's, it's actually pretty cool. It's like a mini game that took me a little bit too long to actually realize what it was. The combat is moving a bit slow, but my skills have nearly no cooldown, so essentially I can queue them up and pull the combos off very, very quickly. So that, that's pretty cool. I like the complexity here. It made the combat a little bit more interesting than stab, stab, e extra stab. Oh, <laughs> All right, so Strider comes in and rescues us, but his buddy gets knifed like a turkey on Thanksgiving, and now the whole prison is burning down, so it's time to go. Here we are in the bustling town of Archette to continue our journey, and the UI is pretty straightforward, and it vaguely reminds me of that of World of Warcraft. Then, when I can figure out that I actually have customization and can move the UI, I immediately change it to my old UI setup in WoW because I like feeling unique. The quest givers have a unique icon above them, of course, it being the ring. 
be weird if it was like Elijah Wood's face, but pixelated, but you know. I really didn't know who was playing the music in this tavern, but they were absolutely thumping. This is a song, man. <laughs> The quest UI is pretty cool as it tracks like everything that was either said or who I talked to in this one chain. I do like that. But then when I check out the map and eh, yeah, well, yes, it is pretty cool. It, it, it needs a massive update. I have to kind of poke around to understand what is happening here or where I need to go to figure this out. But uh, eventually I get used to it. And, and again, compared to other things, this isn't that bad. The rings show me where I need to go, and then I can get a color-coded outlay which shows exactly what I need to do and where I need to look, so it's a very nice touch. I zoom out just to see how big this world is, and oh boy is it big. I love this aspect. Poking around, seeing all the important areas from the stories, it was, it was actually a lot of cool. And this gives me quite a bit of excitement because there's so many different areas to explore. So we continue the main quest, which is seemingly like a massive tutorial, which of course I'm all, all about. I like having the freedom to search and figure out things on my own, but sometimes I do need a bit of guidance. I also found this in my inventory, which is something that I should have paid attention to earlier, but it shows me the Gambit Q system and how my class mechanic works. Sometimes I really do need to just slow down and read the text. Anyway, I also notice that while I'm killing mobs, the loot that they drop is just picked up in an area around me with this little window down here. I I just I just have this pop up. I click it and then I loot everything and then good to go. It's it's actually something I really enjoy because it allows me to just focus on the combat and what I'm doing rather than just hunting for all the different loot and running over to each of the mobs. So we progress the story and we find out that one of the beloved townsfolks may actually be a part of the problem and are plotting the destruction of our beautiful hamlet. Shocker. <laughs> So now we need to recruit some help from the nearby Ranger Lodge. Okay, cool, let's go. This guy over here has a quest for us, telling us to take a nap. Listen, I probably drink more caffeine than I need to, and I do get the sleepy sometimes, but the fever dream that I just had here is not a side effect from the caffeine. I don't have that weird of a dream. When my character went to sleep, I am immediately taken to a cutscene that is running through different story elements and talking about all the different parts of what is going to happen or what can happen, essentially setting up the story. And this hobbit over here having like some sort of panic attack, I don't know, I don't know, he was having a problem. I struggle through this and I have to restart the cinematic and then skip it, something it wouldn't go all the way through and then it froze, so... You know, something happens, I get credit, you know, note, never to sleep in this game again. Thus far, I'm truly loving the pacing of the story. It gives me enough to be intrigued about the game, but not being overwhelmingly detailed that I have to read every single line that comes across. After confirming that the bandits will attack on the town and we set up an ambush at the spider entrance, so go figure, eight-legged monster-sized spiders is probably not the best plan of attack. We progress through to find the captain's son and give him a brief sentimental moment until Calder Cobb, that friendly townsfolk guy, comes in and ruins the moment with a blunt punchline. Then we get to kill him. Yay. I've already mastered the stabby stabby, so this is short work. Now here we are at the end of the prologue. Now this is when your story really begins. My first order of business is to collect every single quest that I can. Why? Because I'm a lazy completionist, really. I explore the immediate town to find the class trainer and some of the vendors. Pretty interesting, but not nearly as interesting as this guy right here. I talk to him and to find out that I can scale the difficulties of the challenges and the monsters in the world. Because mama ain't raised no B, I go for fearless plus three. So let's go and test it out and oh my god, this was a horrible idea. A simple boar is absolutely blasting me. Like seriously, I had to run and kite just not to die. And of course it doesn't help that 
Sauron himself is summoning flame pillars that explode on me that I wasn't even prepared for, so yay to me. This is where Lord of the Rings Online became a great MMO to me. I absolutely love the idea that I can scale up the difficulty in the world to challenge myself. The combat now becomes incredibly important. I'm not breezing through every mob that I fight. So I don't pull too much and I'm making sure that my gambits and my skill priorities are appropriate and that I'm even taking mobs down with strategy rather than just blindly attacking things until everything is a fine red mist, as this feature explains itself. So I'll receive extra benefits by reaching a certain level without lowering the difficulty. It offers just the right amount of solo energy that I love. I am a casual gamer, so of course it appeals directly to me. While doing this, I see the deed system popped up, and this essentially seems like a very simple defeat so many of X mobs and you get a title, or you get some other things like the in-game shop coins. Which honestly, looking at the in-game shop is a bit too much to be sure, but the one thing that kind of irks me is like the riding skill. It seems I have to purchase coins to get the riding skill, which even how much running I, I love to do, it is a it is it's a bit of a pain. There's a lot of distance to cover and having a mount would really, really help out, but now it's kind of like behind a paywall. Anywho, I continue my journey, questing and fighting mobs, and also gaining sweet mastery of my gambit skills. I get to see the crafting menus and the options, however, they seem a bit more complex than I care to learn right here at this moment. But they do seem to have quite a few options. It's also odd that like all the crafters in this town live in this one particular area. That's it's a, little, a little weird. I also glance over here at the trade lines and oh boy, do I love the customization of the trade lines. This does again remind me of the older school, we'll say older skill trees of World of Warcraft, which is where I came from very long ago. While it's easy to focus just on damage, the difficulty scaling is amazing as it forces me to play a more balanced approach to make more balanced choices rather than just straight damage pumping. I take healing modifiers for my rejuvenate ability to keep me into combat longer. Looking at the different build types and skills, uh, it, it the choices, it just truly is a great time for any theory crafters out there. After getting trounced a few times, taking on too many mobs, and then finally finishing some quests, I am level 10. A small journey, but an extremely informative one. So Lord of the Rings Online is an amazing solo MMORPG, or should I just say a solo RPG with people that are nearby? I'm not quite sure how I should approach that one. The game has, of course, some really good pacing. Uh, the quests and the story, they feel meaningful, and the combat is actually really great. It's not super flashy, and honestly, hearing my warden scream as a combo builder every, like, two seconds is kind of funny, and then it got obnoxious. I love the difficulty scaling in the beginning, however, I like the challenge. Even as a new player, I want it to be as difficult as I can handle, as each mob has a threat of death, and each encounter could turn south very, very quickly, which is kind of refreshing. I actually wish more games would implement this scalability, where you could actually receive extra benefits by challenging yourself and getting to a certain level with a certain added modifier of difficulty. I think that would actually intrigue a lot of players to come back and play older content or to complete certain challenges. I bring up like Guild Wars 2, the game I mainly made content on, and having some type of difficulty modifier for, we'll say, the beginning leveling process would actually be pretty cool. I'd like to see that. The map, of course, was a bit outdated, and sometimes it's hard to navigate, but if that's the worst thing I can really say about the game, then it's a pretty damn good game. Actually, the writing skill was worse. That, that, that annoyed the hell out of me. Overall, this game offers a lot to new players in 2023, and I 100% believe that it's a game that I would recommend for solo players or casual players who can't really spend loads and loads of time playing games. There's a ton of content available and plenty of things to do, but most of all, the game features, the best things about MMOs is this sense of adventure, and Lord of the Rings Online definitely brings that in. Now, scaling up the difficulty, of course, is my personal choice, and there might be some other players who, who don't choose to do that and would rather just kind of cruise through these mobs and cruise through these kills, and that's okay that every, to each its own. 
However, I think that's one of its best features is actually giving the choice to the player of what they want to do with their game and with their character. And I think that is a beautiful aspect that this game has added. I will say after 10 levels, I'm I'm intrigued. I want to play more. I do want to see where this game goes and I want to put some more time into it. And I think that's something very important, especially to a lot of players is, especially the older MMO players who don't necessarily need all the flashiness and the, we'll say the perfect pixel art of a game such as like New World, which it is very beautiful and very picturesque. But does it have the depth? It, it might. It might now. But it didn't release. I can't wait to dig in and find some more hidden features of this game. Progress my Warden into higher levels and skills. And it, it was just an amazing time. I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself here. Now, as a disclaimer, I did not progress all the way to endgame, nor did I do really anything that required grouping. But as a new player experience and, and just that first initial impression, it was a pretty good one. If you are interested in supporting me in my journey to find the greatest MMO ever, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in one of my videos, consider joining the membership here to this channel to help me reach my goal of becoming a full-time content creator. As always, stay caffeinated, folks.